Hey, what's up guys? My name is Rich Millard, and this is my second book on KDP called Surfer Sam and the Party Wave. Uh, you're here because you're also creative and you want to create a book. I want to take all the stuff I learned along the way, the stuff that took me a lot of time, and help you save that so you can spend more time being creative and more time finishing your book. So hope this helps, and uh, thanks for visiting. You know, in the case of this book that I just did, Surfer Sam and the Party Wave, I drew out 32 individual pictures with the story. So I wrote the story and then I took, you know, just a, a blank piece of paper and I drew out every single page. Then what I did after I had, you know, drawn it out and inked it out, I then scanned it into my computer, all 32 pages. So here's my scans. And here, I'll just kind of give you an idea of what those look like. So this is the first scan, second scan. You can actually see the, uh, the page bleeding through on the other side third scan, fourth scan. So you kind of see how I did that. And so what I, what I did was I basically scanned each one. And now we're going to go ahead and put that into Adobe Illustrator. And I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily digitize it so you can start coloring that in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick out one for uh, the sake of our demo. Let's pick out eh, this last one here. This is the ending of my book. And so let's go ahead and create an Adobe file. File. New. Let's do print. I did eight and a half by 11. Oops. Helps to be in inches first. Okay, by 11. Okay, we're gonna set the bleed to 0.125 on the top. It's gonna do it on all of them. I'm gonna go and unlock that. This is on the, this is, this page is right. So we're gonna get rid of the gutter. There's no bleed on the gutter. And let's go. Sam tutorial. Okay. So now we've got this page. Let's go ahead and go to our layers tab so we can see where we are. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and file place that uh, scan that we have. File, place. Now let's go to desktop, server Sam, scans. So it's also very important that you keep everything organized um, you're going to be dealing with a lot of pages. And so if you're not well organized, you're not well labeled, it's going to get very confusing. All right, so I'm going to go and line that up there. All right, so we placed that. Let's say that I want to put color to this, right? I want to, I don't know, put some color to him. Now, if I go, you know, create no outline, let's go ahead and give him some, well, let's give him some pinkish red hair. And I use the pen tool, right? Well, the problem is, you can't see through that white line. The black and the white line, it is opaque. You can't see through it. So what you're going to want to do, let's go ahead and leave that now. We're going to select the picture. And then we're going to go window trace, or image trace, excuse me. Image trace. And that's going to pop up here. Now what you're going to do while this is selected, you're going to go to preset, black and white logo. And just click OK there. And what it's doing is it's kind of doing a quick trace where it's basically getting rid of the white and it's leaving the black. Now what I'll, I'll do is this helps it out. You're going to go to advanced. You're going to go ignore white. Let's do it again. It's going to get better. And hey, right away you see that color that we did. It's popping through there. Now that's really cool. Now there's a little bit of tweaking you want to do just to make this as good as possible. So what I've found is you kind of just mess with the threshold a little bit and kind of see how things got a little darker there. That's nice. And then you're also going to want to mess with the paths a little bit. I usually kind of go up to around here, 75, corners. And this is just a little, you kind of just fudge around with this a little bit and just kind of see what it does each time. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, let's say that I like all this, but I don't want this. I, I want to use, you know, text that I can, you know, find inside Adobe Illustrator. What you can do is while you're selected on this, you are going to go ahead and go to Object expand and just click okay so now what you've done is you've vectorized everything so now there you are literally able to grab these points and move what you've drawn around in adobe illustrator so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to press the letter a i've got that tool selected and let's go ahead and do that so now you can start deleting out what you don't want so i'm just going i'm using the a tool and I'm just slowly erasing all this stuff that's no good. So great. Now I got that gone. And all right, yeah, let's go ahead and save as Super Sam tutorial. Oh, remember to save. That's super important. I've definitely had plenty of times where I've forgotten to save and then the computer crashes or whatever and you lose everything. And it's a bummer. 
All right, so now let's go ahead and lock that layer. Let's add a text layer. Text, again, labeling and organizing. organization is key. Let's do width. And then let's kind of blow that up. I don't know. This isn't how my book is laid out, but let's just futz around with it. I'm going to go ahead and copy that so that it's about the same size. Friends. All right. So that's two things. Well, let's do something like this. And hey, I don't have enough room for it. So let's go ahead and lock that layer. I'm going to do Apple A and then press the V button. And now you're going to kind of slide that up. So what you're doing is you're really giving yourself an option to like really fiddle around with how you're doing everything. Then let's go ahead and lock that. And great, now I've got room for our text. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock my text layer. Let's write that up and slide that down, something like that. You know, of course, you can really mess around with, you know, your, your fonts that you're using. So, you know, we could do something like, oh, that's nice. Um, Oh, there you go. That's something goofy. So let's do that. Let's align it to each other. Align it to selection. There we go. And now it's aligned to the artboard. Look at that. That's cool. All right. So we've got that going now. And let's go ahead and color something in. So what you're going to do, I did this earlier. I've got everything else locked. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Now, a very useful tool in coloring things in is called the pen tool. And what you do is you basically slowly, you can zoom in, Apple Plus, and you can color in whatever you want. So in this case, let's go ahead and color in his hair. And let's just use the pink color that we already have. So you're going to click your first dot, and then you're going to kind of come up a little ways, and you're going to click and hold, and then you're going to drag it. And see how you're creating this little line here? That's actually kind of pulling the arc where those little um, end knobs are. This is something that just takes a little bit of time but trust me, you just kind of fiddle with this and you'll get good at it. So every time you click, you're holding and you pull. And what you're doing is you're just kind of forcing the arc to bend. You don't have to necessarily bend it. You could literally just come and just click along like this. But you'll find as you get better with the tool that rather than doing click, 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 it's just better just to do the click and drag and you kind of force that arc out. So you do something like that. We'll just kind of go along his hair. And we'll go up this way. And bah, bah. Yeah, this is pretty meticulous, I you have to admit. But the neat thing is, um, once you have it all done, you can change colors really easily, and it also just looks really great. So I'm not going to worry too much about being perfect. You can always go back in there and adjust those those uh, nodes if need be. Oops, go ahead and just pull that. Okay. All right, great. So now you have that. Now here's what's kind of neat. So you're working with layers, so things can go above and below each other. So let's go ahead and choose a different color for his face. Let's make him green. All right. So because you have this here, you can actually just overlap this here and then send it behind. So you're not, you don't have to take every single color and follow lines. Once you follow the line with one color, you can kind of utilize that to um, help you save time. So let's do his face. And see, I'm not worrying about going along the line. Now, wherever there's a place where I don't have a color already, I'm going to go ahead and follow the line. But like for the sake of where I had color, um, I'm going to just go ahead and go right behind it because I'll show you a trick in a second. So we go along this line here, and then, okay, we've got color here, so I'm just going to, you know, this just saves you a lot of time. All right, so you're saying, okay, that looks terrible, right? His face isn't where he's supposed to be. Well, if you push Apple and then this little bracket here, it sends it behind, and look at that. Now you've just saved all that time not having to trim along this. You've taken advantage of your previous layer. I've sent the, the face layer behind the hair layer, and there you go. So now, of course, you're looking at this saying, well, he's green in the face, he's pink in the hair. This doesn't make any sense. What you do is you select that. We'll double-click the fill layer, layer. Let's give him a color that makes more sense. Let's see here. Let's find him. Let's give him more of a brown. Brown hair. Brownish red. There we go. So here we go. There's his brownish red hair. Let's go ahead and give him some skin that's more appropriate. Let's find that here. There we go. Now he's starting to look like a human. So, you know, you know these aren't perfect, but we, what you can also do is you can also import, like, color pictures and stuff off to the side here. And then you can use the eyedropper 
So for example, let's pretend that this was a color that you wanted. You select that with the eyedropper and look, now it turned gray, which is just the color of off the artboard. But if this was a picture that you like the color of, you can also select it that way. So yeah, that's kind of how it works, guys. You're gonna just go through and you're gonna color each thing. I have found that, for example, this, let's call this uh, Sam's layer. When you do somebody else's layer, it's good to go ahead and do, you know, create their own layer. And again, the, the, the higher it is, is on this, that's a top layer and this is a bottom layer. So for example, let's do Bob. He's below Sam. So when I'm doing, when I'm working on his, his shirt here, let's go ahead and give this a bright green. When this is working uh, on his shirt here, let's go ahead and grab pen. You do not have to um, go along the hair of Surfer Sam, because look, you can just let the layer do the work for you. So there you go. So now, instead of wasting your time going along Surfer Sam's hair, look at that, you've got his shirt right behind him. It does all the work for you, you know, just laying right over the top of it. Anyways, that's how this works. And uh, on the next tutorial, we'll talk about how you take all your Adobe Illustrator files and turn them into a PDF so you can submit it to KDP. All right, guys, I hope that tutorial helped you out. Uh, be sure to check my other videos for other tutorials that might also help you, and also subscribe to my channel just so you can see if there's any new content that might be helpful to you. And also, if you're interested in buying Surfer Sam in the Party Wave, you can find it on Amazon, or you also can buy it at the link below. Um, I hope to see your guys' uh, projects on Amazon real soon. Be sure to list them down in the comments below. I would love to keep up with you guys and find out how your projects are going. All right, thanks, guys.